you see this past July. Um, and looking forward to uh, launching this program and working with you all. Um, overall, I've been in the mortgage industry for about 24 years, and uh, I think I uh, first started helping with mortgage relief in about 2006. So I'll turn it to you just to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the program. Thank you, Brian. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eugesh Patel. Uh, I am the operations manager for the DMER program at Delaware State Housing Authority. Uh, I've been with the agency for close to two and a half, three years now. Um, I was working as a housing financial analyst under Brian, uh, then left with another agency and recently joined uh, to run the HAF program for Delaware State. Uh, so we're just going to jump in and uh, uh, run through the program here. Uh, next slide, please. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, so as mentioned, the program launched in June of this year. And since then, we have created and launched a program dashboard which is available on the demortgagehelp.com website. We just wanted to share a few screenshots of it now. This information was last updated last night. Um, the dashboard is updated daily as well. So I'll turn it over to Brian and Yujef again, just for any points on this first part of the dashboard. Yeah, thank you, Lori. Uh, so what you're seeing in front of you currently um, uh, we're seeing a breakdown of what uh, currently we have been uh, funded or assistance wise. So we have close to $1.3 million uh, that has been paid out to 237 unique household members, um, which is great. Uh, we hit our first million. Um, we have currently in progress about 466 applications. Uh, that includes uh, ones where they're pending uh, for additional documents and or uh, CDF records for the servicers. The next uh, screen here is a broken down of the total assistance amount by county level. As you can see, the majority of our applicants approved are in the northern region of Delaware. Um, we have currently, let's see here, I'm just trying to expand my screen here. Sorry about that. Uh, as you can see, like the majority of the business is in the northern county area. Um, Whereas right now, what we're looking to do with the Kent and Sussex County uh, is to increase that uh, number up. We have in this program, it allows folks to, you know, include that lot rent. So keep in mind that, you know, those uh, property uh, types down in the south, um, they we do include that in our program for our, the lot rent and whatnot. Uh, next slide, please. Here, you're going to see a breakdown of the demographics of the households that were assisted. Um, four different sections here. So, the one that I wanted to point out here is in the top right hand corner, uh, which is the AMI. Um, right now, as you can see, all the assisted amount has been under that 100% or less AMI, uh, which is what the prioritization was for this program. Um, you can also see the breakdown of uh, just the other uh, race, ethnicity, and gender well, on the screen. Next slide, please. All right. So then, next slide is a reminder for applications. Um, the first point being uh, documents cannot be faxed or emailed uh, to the program team. Participants must use the application portal. Uh, this is an important thing to note. Um, if, if applicants do need uh, help uploading documents or just filling out an application, uh, we do advise uh, for them to reach out to a housing counselor, a HUD approved housing counselor in their county, uh, and, th and they'll be able to get that uh, uploaded into the portal. Uh, home homeowners must be delinquent at least 30 days. Um, this is a thing that we've been running to a lot here. Um, we have homeowners who are applying for the program who are current on their mortgage. Um, however, it is a requirement uh, to be at least 30 days delinquent on their application um, as a qualification. Uh, applicants uh, for duplicate applications, uh, it does lead to uh, delay in processing. Uh, so please uh, keep those duplicates out of the system. And last not but least, uh, the selecting loan modification or unable to sustain payments. Um, this 
does lead to delays in the application process. Um, when folks are applying through the portal, uh, we advise them to click on uh, that they are able to make that uh, payments moving forward so that it does get broken down to a to applicant to a more uh, into a more reviewable uh, side of it. Um, next slide, please. Another uh, reminder for the applications, um, homeowners are not guaranteed for $40,000 in assistance. Um, this program is up to 40,000, but it's divided into two different unique categories. Uh, the first being the Fresh Start Grant Program, uh, which helps homeowners up to $30,000 to pay uh, the worst that don't make mortgage arrears. Now that includes escrowed uh, taxes and insurance. Uh, the next, however, is the emergency displacement grant uh, for up to $10,000. Uh, those are for non escrowed taxes and insurance, utilities such as water and sewer, uh, HOA fees, and or uh, homeowner association fees. Applications um, cannot be processed without a loan servicer participation. Um, we do require. Um, Loan servers to participate for the HAP program in order to uh, receive these funds. Next slide. Please. Was there anything you wanted to add, Brian? Yeah, I, I did. I always wanted to just touch on the, the duplicate part portion. I think this slide kind of helps tie it together. Is that um, when we talk about duplicates, what we see is sometimes confusion with um, taxes and insurance versus um, escrow. So we see a lot of applicants who um, apply for the mortgage and then apply for the tax and insurance and that tax and insurance is actually included in the mortgage. So the, 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 the second application gets denied and it kind of confuses the applicant. So if the mortgage is included uh, or taxes insurance is included in the mortgage payment, just 1 application is required um, for the um, fresh start grant. Thank you. Lauren. Yeah, that's a great clarification. Thank you. Uh, and the denial process. Um, so the denial process are fairly simple. Uh, once an applicant has been denied, uh, they have the option to appeal. Uh, please keep in mind that it is a one time appeal process. Um, appeals, we're looking for folks that to uh, sort of Give us a reason for why they are um, why they are appealing. Um, so we're looking for supporting documentations on that. Uh, some types, some top denial reasons we've had so far: um, they're not more than thirty days delinquent on their mortgage, um, or they owe more than um, the program assistance maximum, or their DTI is too high. Um, once that appeal is in the system, uh, we'll have a case manager on there uh, who reevaluates the appeal. And they will have the option to either get into an approved status or they'll have an um, option to go to the denied final status. Um, once an application is in a denied final status, um, and that, that, that's the end of the road for them, unfortunately, um, they aren't able to reappeal their case. It is a one time appeal. Uh, and once it's in a denied final, uh, that would be it for that applicant. Yeah, I'll just uh, add a little bit to that one piece too. Um, we are um, looking, uh, there's some situations that are coming to us now to bring to light about a potential applicant who may have um, been denied, appealed, um, but now they're, they've they been denied final and they're back to work maybe. Now they can sustain the mortgage payment. We're looking at potential options of helping those um, reopen that appeal if they can afford the mortgage now, but you know they were denied because they were over DTI or didn't have sustainability. Um, they appealed that process unknowingly aware that there was a, a one time appeal and then um, are now at a situation where they can better that, you know, take care of the mortgage. We, we are trying to figure out a way to, uh, to open those cases back up. Okay, thank you both. Um, so that was just a brief overview of our new program dashboard, some application trends that we are seeing, um, both from the participant side and from our other partners, and then just an overview of the denial process. Right now, we can shift into questions. 
If you do have questions, please feel free to place them in the chat or Q&A box. But for now, we can start with the questions that came through during registration. Um, so the first question for Yujesh and Brian, um, can a homeowner qualify if they have not filed taxes in five plus years? That would be a question of, of, of the reason why they haven't filed taxes. If they're a W-2 salary employee, the answer to that question would be no. But they haven't filed taxes in five to seven years because of the form of income or the, their income taxes was not such that they required them to file taxes, then that would not prohibit them from filing. We would just need a letter from the IRS stating that there's no record on file. Um, and then we can proceed with the application, but just um, being a salary employee and not filing taxes, we cannot proceed with that. Is this a federally funded program? Okay, next question. Um, a homeowner has a pending shut off. Is there a way for their application to be escalated? Um. I, I believe if they you know, like, uh, they're casing or calling the call center, we can definitely uh, look into getting that case escalated, definitely. As well as, um, I believe, you just correct me if I'm wrong, but if the, the case is in a denial status, we can also uh, work with them as well to help them get the escalation of the shutoff notice or the foreclosure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we can certainly reach out to uh, the lead recipient in that case uh, just to go ahead and expedite that. Um, just so they, we don't put any pause on their home ownership or anything, but not, or the water bill. We can certainly escalate it. Okay, awesome. Um, so we answered this in the presentation, but it's a good reinforcing question, which is what is the limit amount a homeowner can receive with this program? Um, so the maximum amount um, is $30,000 for a program, including mortgage assistance and taxes and insurance escrow together and a total of $10,000 for mortgage. I mean, sorry for taxes and uh, taxes and fees outside of your mortgage. So if you were uh, applying for the MERP just for um, a tax sale or homeowner insurance or delinquent HOA fees, that maximum is 10. If you were combined, um, so for example, your taxes and insurance were escrowed, but you also had um, homeowner's insurance fees on top of that, and let's say that fee was 5,000 and your mortgage was 30,000, then you can get 35,000. Or if it's 10,000, you can get the 40. But the ta I think the biggest confusion is that the $10,000 does not go to taxes and insurance if you're being included in your mortgage payment. That total delinquency number comes out of the $30,000 number. So you can't get $30,000 of mortgage assistance and then use the $10,000 for tax and insurance for a combined 40. Okay. Um, so the next question, um, how does this program differ from DMAP? Um, so DMAP was a mortgage um, that was deferred for 30 years or till the home was sold um, or no longer the borrower's primary residence. DMAP also had more restrictive um, qualifications for um, how they can what they use the money for. Um, DMERP uh, as a as a grant. It's also um, you can use it in different forms. So the map, we can only reinstate or pay future mortgage payments. The MERP um, is no, we can do not have future mortgage payments, but you can use it for reinstatement as well as assisting the applicant to do a loan modification. So if a person's DTI is exceeding the limits and they, um, they need more than just um, the delinquency to catch up, you can use portion of that $30,000 to help negotiate with the lender to complete a modification for them. That's the biggest, the biggest distinction is, is really the, the grant versus mortgage and the type of assist, how we can apply the money. Oh, and another big thing is too, and you just touched on this. Um, 
DMAP had to be real estate only. So mobile homes on rented land were not eligible. Um, and DMERP, we will assist for mo with mobile homes on rented land as well. Uh, so not just pay the delinquent financing costs, but pay the delinquent lot rent, if any, as well in that one program. So they don't need to apply for DHAP and DMERP. We can assist them directly through the DMERP program. Okay, so we have two more questions from the registration form, and then we'll move into chat questions. But the next question is a bit technical, so please apologize if it, or I apologize if it's a little confusing. But will the program assist a debt, someone in debt? Sorry, I'll start over. Can, a, can the program assist someone in bankruptcy to become current on post petition mortgage payments? while paying mortgage arrears through a plan? That is a question I need to dig into um, just to determine if their bankruptcy attorney is gonna allow them to incur new debt while they're in the bankruptcy. Okay, awesome. And then um, what is the lead time for application acceptance and when the money is sent to the mortgage company? I'll let you just tackle that when he has the numbers on that. Sounds good, Ryan. Uh, currently, we're at about between, on average, we're between 30 and 45 days from application, full application complete, received up until the funding. So that, you know, a complete application with all the required documents, uh, we received all the verification from the uh, servicer, uh, and then we reached the approval rate and then approved side and into um, the funding. So on average right now, we're between the 30 and 45 day range. Awesome. Okay. Question from the chat. I have a client who applied and was giving a generic denial letter. It stated no reason for the denial. Is this common? Where can I find a reason? I would say we, if we had the applicant's name or case number, we can definitely find a, a reason. I'm not sure why it would be very generic unless it was something erroneous or input um, input error or they um, exceeded the limits when they applied or something of that nature. But yes, definitely share that information with you, Jess, and we'll be able to get information back to you. Yes, I will also add that we have um, recently updated our denial reasons too. Um, so, depending on when the denial letter was received, um, updates have been made to make it more specific. Yep. Thanks, Laurie. Forgot about that. Can a homeowner apply for the program if they are in bankruptcy or in the process of filing for bankruptcy? Yeah, that same answer is going to have to really. We actually, uh, I, I'll say this in addition to my previous response is that. Um, we are looking to add um, a legal aid component to to the program to kind of help aid us and aid the applicants in this in these situations, not just bankruptcy cases, but um, tangled title situations where they may be dealing with uh, legal legal sanctions from the mortgage company. Um, we, because of the sensitivity of bankruptcy, we definitely need to um, consult our counsel as well as their counsel about the ability to take on this program. And what we can do. Okay. Is there a limit on how delinquent someone can be for this program? I wouldn't say there's a limit on how, the, how delinquent they could be as long as it's less than the amount of money that we're going to be able to aid in, um, or if they have the difference that they can combine. So um, an applicant is over. $30,000, that's kind of assumed that it's no HOA fees and things of that nature. Um, but they have, you know, they owe $40,000 in their arrears and they can continue on their own. As, as long, if they have the gap financing or the money to, to combine with their, um, our assistance, then we could aid in that. I think that the question becomes, was the delinquency prior to January of 2020, which is the, the start date. So if their delinquency started prior to the qualification time period, then we're not going to be able to assist that. Okay. Another question from the chat. Um, program states that 30 days delinquent is a requirement. 
wouldn't everyone who applies be 30 days delinquent because the program arose during COVID-19? No, it does not mean that everyone is delinquent um, that applies. Um, some people have been able to maintain their, their mortgage, um, but may have a new hardship. You know, hardship may have began in June of 2022. And they're current on the mortgage right now, but you know, they may be delinquent in September. Doesn't, you know, doesn't make them delinquent um, right at application period. Okay. And just to be safe, um, someone shared in the chat that the audio broke up specifically on the delinquent question on how delinquent someone can be. So I think it's just that last part in terms of the financial hardship after January 2020. Can you just repeat that part? Sure, sure. Um, what I was saying is that um, if the amount of delinquency exceeds the program maximum, so if it's $30,000, um, and they have the difference, so maybe they had savings, they had money, uh, 401k, whatever they may have done to kind of use that money to combine with the 30,000, um, then we could do that to help them, you know, exceed the, the program maximum. But the delinquency would have to be, have been gun, begun after the program start date, meaning was that January 1, 2020, you just? Right. Yep. So, yep. Sorry, January twenty first of twenty twenty. January twenty first. So, if the delinquency happened, began in November, of you know, then that program that that delinquency would not be able to be included into the the program. So, delinquency began prior to January twenty first of twenty twenty one. We couldn't insist at all, no matter if they had the money or not. The delinquency has to be going to be after that date. The delinquency has to be 30 days or greater. Um, and all applicants, I think to kind of repeat that part, all applicants who apply are not 30 days behind. They wouldn't all be 30 days behind. Okay. Um, is there assistance or accommodations for disabled applicants? Um, specifically to submit an application in person or uh, have assistance? We are currently working on getting um, a, a housing counseling agencies onboarded to uh, to be able to help with that. But I would believe um, if, if there is a, an applicant in need, we can figure out a way between you just and someone else on the team to uh, help that applicant uh, get their application submitted. Yep, and we'll talk about this uh, next, but there's also an op opportunity for a homeowner representative that is a trusted person in your life, whether that is a housing counselor, a friend, a family member, a neighbor, to submit an application on your behalf. That is also an option that can be done with this program. Okay. Is it possible to submit an application for water only? And would they be separate applications, water and mortgage? Yes, they can submit application for utilities only um, and then uh, a mortgage only, yes. Two separate applications. Okay. Can someone apply for the program who does not have a COVID-19 related delinquency that is 30 days behind after the program start date? Um, the answer, yeah. Sorry, the answer, I was going to clarify, I think. <laughs> yeah, so the, the answer to that would be if the delinquency happened after that time period um, and there is a, I guess, this is how we, we state it, it's has a hardship. The other right. two answer. So it's like, uh, so you must have had a financial hardship, like a reduction in income or an increase in housing related expenses on or after that date of January 21st of 2020. Yeah, it doesn't specifically say COVID. It says you have to have a financial hardship or um, an increase in housing expenses. Okay. 
Okay, next question, where are our offices located? Um, so the Delaware State Housing Authority offices are located in Dover, and that is 18 the Green, Dover, Delaware. Um, are both applications for water and mortgage available on your site? So yes, it is the same application. When you go through the application, it'll ask sort of what assistance you're requesting and what delinquencies you have. And that is how you can differentiate between the water and mortgage application. Okay. Yeah, so just to clarify on that, sorry. Um, it, it will still be one application for both water and mortgage. Um, and then once it is complete and all documents are there, it will then it will be split into two different cases. So you want to fill out one application for both water and mortgage, and there will be a separate question in the application itself to list um, the delinquencies for each of those categories. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. And um, for this constituent asking the questions, um, we'd be happy to follow up offline as well. So while we wait for more questions to come in, we'll just go through the remaining slides, which is that our next partner call will take place on Wednesday, October 5th at 3 p.m. Um, please make a note of the day and time change. Um, but again, this will be in the follow-up email as well as on the DE Mortgage Help website. Um, we are asking for all of the help and all of the assistance to continue getting the word out about this program. If you visit demortgagehelp.com, you'll find flyers under resources that you can download and share with those that you work with. We also have upcoming events with local legislators to help spread the message about the program in different districts. This is an open invitation, so if you or your organization would like to host a session on this program, please let us know and we'd be happy to help coordinate those details. Um, as I mentioned, the homeowner representative option is always available. Um, again, this is a trusted person who can fill out an application on behalf of a homeowner. And there are trainings to help with this role every Wednesday at 1 p.m. via Zoom. I'll put the link in the chat. And even if you're curious, this is just this training is a good way to see what the portal looks like to see um, the different areas and the different fields as well. And then last but not least, our amazing housing counselors. Um, thank you for the conversations with Yuzesh and Brian, um, and we will have more, more information coming soon. And Laura, I think there's one more uh, question I've seen pop in. Yep. Um, so to answer the question about um, refinancing, we don't require you to refinance. Um, we do have three, um dti limits um as long as you're within the dti band that does, that your mortgage is affordable so under 45 percent dti um you're not required to refinance and in any aspect you're not required to refinance you may be required to work with your mortgage lender to perform a mortgage modification um so that the terms of your loan are more affordable to you um but we don't require any any form of refinancing And again, um, this is scheduled till three o'clock, so we are happy to stay on and answer any other questions you may have. Um, but just also wanted to share the upcoming legislator events with you all. Um, the next one will be next Tuesday with Representative Kevin Hensley at the Odessa Fire Hall. And we're excited to be with Senator Marie Pickney on Zoom during her constituent coffee hour. And then later in the month and into October, um, we will be working with Senator Tizzy Lachman and Representative oops, Medina Wilson Anton. Again, um, these are just additional opportunities to learn about the program. So if you know anyone who lives in these districts or just wants to learn more about how to get assistance, they're welcome to attend.
And again, I will take down the presentation, but we will, are happy to stay on and continue answering any questions that may come in. No, I'm not. Uh, I just see one more pop in. Confidential process, absolutely. All, all, all application processes are, are confidential. Okay, so seeing no more questions, um, we will adjourn this partner call this month um, and I am placing the chat and the registration link for the October 5th call in the chat now. Um, but again, we are happy to stay on and continue talking through questions, but if you have no more, please feel free to, to um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I do see one question, uh, two more questions. Um, so we have a husband and wife situation. Do we put only the homeowner husband's income information or do we include the spouse's income information as well? Uh, to answer that question, yes, you would put um, the income for everyone that's in the household uh, that is earning, um, that is over the age of 18. Uh, so we, we would want everybody included um, for that. Okay. And actually, just to touch on that, um, this pro this program does require for income. So if you have any income, please go ahead and um, include that in there. Um, just because of the debt to income ratios, um, so we do want to see that you are earning income that you are able to afford that uh, mortgage payment moving forward. So please include all the income that uh, you have um, earned in the household. And I see a question about um, US Treasury and getting the program funded. Um, the question is, why did it take so long? Um, we're not sure, but it's here now. So <laughs> uh, make sure you take advantage of it while we still have it. So how to request an in-person application. Um, so in-person application assistance is not available right now, you can email one of us on this call. I'll place our emails in the chat and we'll follow up with you on offline about getting um, some application assistance. Okay, so it looks like we are all good here. Again, if any other questions come up, um, our email addresses are in the chat and you'll also receive them in the follow-up email and um, we're here to help. So please keep them coming our way. But in the meantime, have a great afternoon and we look forward to seeing you again next month. Thanks everyone.